Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Kagiyama, and I'd like to welcome everyone here to To Be Your Own Hero. I'm a stage four prostate, bone, and lung cancer patient slash survivor. I've been dealing with cancer since late 2020, early 2021. Uh, just reestablished care in Texas here and um, got some testing set up. So when I get when I hear of the results, I will let you know. But uh, as of right now, things look, it's it's taken a lot to get reestablished with care. But, you know, as usual, you have to fight for yourself. You have to advocate for yourself and don't let things slide through like they try to do all the time. Just keep on top of it. And I don't care if they think I'm a pain. It doesn't matter. It's my life. And, and, uh, you know, I'm the one responsible for my life. So that's that's the way I deal with it. But things are moving along well. And uh, today we have a very special guest, uh, David Robbins. What I like to do is he's got an incredible story. And this is a little different videos because we're going to ask, uh, be asking for help out there, uh, asking for your help, whoever sees it. And if you know somebody who uh, can possibly help, please send them this video. And also in the description, uh, there's going to be David's uh, links. I'll also put it in the comment section as well so you know where to get in hold of him. Or you can always uh, uh, message me, uh, direct message me on LinkedIn, message me on YouTube. Uh, on, I'm on Rumble also, so we're going to be posting this video on both YouTube and Rumble. So what I'd like to do is bring on our guest. Uh, his name is David Robbins. Dave, please introduce yourself and and tell us a little bit about what we're doing here today. Very good. Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Dave Robbins. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, I have four children. Um, my youngest is Tyler, who was adopted right from birth. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he was 15 years old when he was first diagnosed with leukemia AML. Uh, he is part of the Oneida Nation tribe, which is out of uh, Wisconsin. And uh, he, uh, he's been battling uh, leukemia for the last, uh, well, since 2023. And he's uh, currently going through the battle uh, still through 2024 thus far. Okay, yeah, what, uh, so how, how did the journey start? Uh, what alerted you, you know, what symptoms did he have? What was he feeling uh, so that, you know, directed you to, to start this journey? You know, we, we just as a family had gone down to the Rose Bowl in uh, 2023 and uh, we're watching the University of Utah play, got back in January and he started complaining of aches in his joints. Uh, and then he started getting nosebleeds that we couldn't stop. And, uh, and then eventually he started, uh, he, he started throwing up blood. And it was at that time that we took him to the hospital uh, it took very little time for the hospital we were in to transport him to Primary Children's Hospital in Salt Lake City. Uh, he was immediately transferred over. And within 24 hours, they had him on chemotherapy and had, had alerted us to uh, the fact that he had leukemia. Uh, they did not know at the time whether it was AML or ALL, but uh, he immediately went on chemotherapy. Uh, he had a large uh, deposit of blood on his skull at the time we got there. Uh, they were worried about brain hemorrhaging and uh, they were feeding him with platelets. And of course you had the leukemia, um, you had the chemotherapy going on and then you had the platelets going on. So it was, uh, it, it was as though three armies were fighting each other. And uh, we had about 72 hours in which they, they felt were the key hours uh, to really stop the bleeding near the brain. And every time the door opened up, my wife and I were uh, 
always shaking because it seemed like all we were getting was bad news. You know, eventually they diagnosed it as AML. Uh, they were worried about brain hemorrhaging and uh, praying that the platelets would do, would do their job. So they, they did, they did their job. We were able to, uh, we were able to get past that point. We were in the PICU, uh, so the primary is ICU, and um, and that's where we spent a lot of our time right out of the gate was was right in ICU. Um, they moved him up to the oncology floor shortly after they felt like the brain hemorrhage uh, 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 concern had passed. Uh, he's, he probably spent no more than four days in the, uh, on the oncology floor and they realized that he, was, he couldn't breathe. So they moved him back down to the PICU again and he went into a very, a very extreme um, pulmonary hemorrhaging and uh, uh, they had to intubate him and push air into his lungs to try to use that as their defense against the blood entering his lungs. Um, we literally had a group uh, at the time uh, come into the room and basically wanted to talk to us about our options should he pass uh, away and, and my response at that time was, uh, I'm not interested in talking to you about this. Um, his, his orders are that he's gonna walk out on both of his feet uh, from this hospital. And I only want people working on him that believe that too. And so they walked out of the, out of the room and we've never, that's been our philosophy right from the very beginning. If you gotta believe in his, uh, it, you know, in his recovery or else I really, really don't want you uh, working on Tyler. Oh, I love that. Absolutely love that. So when Tyler got diagnosed, what went through your wife's, yours and your wife's minds? How did it affect you? I mean, I know it had to be devastating. Yeah, it, it's the worst nightmare for a parent. Um, you know, for me, the, the phone would ring at night. Uh, first of all, my wife has never left his side. So Tyler has never spent a night uh, in the hospital without her there. He's, wow. She's been there every single night. Um, very positive, uh, always by his side. And the young man has never been alone. So when she goes home, I'm there. Uh, with him. So he's never spent a minute alone. Um, we were horrified. We were scared. Um, uh, for me, uh, I had, you know, for the first six months, I had a, a real tough time sleeping. Uh, I spent a lot of times at night sitting in a chair uh, waiting for a phone call because it seemed like every phone call I received that was a step backwards was coming at night. So it, it affected us, uh, you know, very strongly and, and uh, especially, especially myself. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep for about six months. Oh man, that's, that's terrible. How did it affect uh, his sib Tyler's siblings? You know, we're a very close family and uh, they are, they, we've had, not only have we had to attend to Tyler, but we've had to attend to our three other uh, brothers and, and a sister uh, who were older than Tyler. Uh, we had to attend to their needs and try to take care of them. And, you know, we still are because of Tyler's present situation. So we are open and honest about what he was going through and what we had said and done. So we've never held back information from them. Uh, and, you know, they've been very positive uh, with Tyler. Um, that under no circumstances do we uh, show any other face but positive we're gonna beat this. Uh, they, they're the same way, you know, behind closed doors, um, we have to get ourselves gathered and make sure we're, we're still fighting. You know, Tyler has a nickname. Uh, we call him Tie Fighter 
after the Star Wars TIE fighters because he, he is so resilient and so strong. He's come through two times for pulmonary hemorrhaging and he's been intubated two times. And yet um, all Tyler talks about is his future and what he's going to wow. what he's going to do. What's he going to do? Well, Tyler, Tyler's uh, really good at debate. So he, he likes to, he likes to do debate. And so he, uh, you know, at this time he, he kind of sees himself as a politician, but, but the reality of Tyler right now is, is he'd, he'd rather uh, as a 16 year old, he'd rather be a 16 year old. He'd rather attend concerts, be with his friends, uh, enjoy life, which other 16 year olds can do. And of course he is, uh, He's, he's unable to do that at this time. He used to play lacrosse. Um, we have a school here, which is a very good lacrosse team, Brighton High School. They dedicated their entire year to Tyler and all of them shaved their heads uh, to match Tyler. And so uh, he just, you know, his, his goals and objectives are right now short term and getting out and being on dates and bothering me about getting a car. And that's the way it should be. That That is, uh, I mean, I am so happy to hear that he's able to keep at least some hold on his, his you know, his age and his childhood. And, and that's so important. I love that. That's really, really great. So let's move on in, in Tyler's journey. So what you know, where is he today? You know, what, what is going on in Tyler, Tyler's world? So uh, to talk about today, you know, Tyler was able to overcome, uh, quote unquote, overcome the first session of, of AML. Uh, he received his, his bone marrow transplant on August uh, 2nd in 2023. Uh, in late September, he was uh, considered to be cancer free and rung the bell. Seven months later, he started complaining of uh, shoulder pain and, and knee pain. Turns out the leukemia was back. Um, you know, his world is spent every single week. Well, in actuality, it never left. It was it was there. It just was in was in a dormant stage and it was moving. Yeah, and and you know they feel the same way uh, at Primary Children's. Um, uh, he uh, he complained a second time about his knee and his and his shoulder. We took him in, and sure enough, they diagnosed leukemia had returned. This was in uh, March of 2024. Uh, they sometime later, a very short period of time after that, after the announcement, he had leukemia again they found a mutation in the leukemia cells and they felt like the current chemotherapy uh, program that they had him on would not address that mutation. Uh, so we're in the position right now where we're using cl clinical trial uh, drugs to basically uh, attack the leukemia. And he just barely started the first one uh, about three days ago, and uh, we met with his oncologist yesterday, and the tone of the meeting was, uh, this is a long shot for him. Um, we, we have three or four options for that, that may attack this mutation, but it hasn't been really proven for AML patients, so, um, you know, get ready for a very hard and difficult fight that uh, the chances aren't as strong as we'd like him to be. And throughout this whole journey, Tyler's maintained his same attitude and demeanor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, uh, he's an amazing he's an amazing young man. He's you know he's, he's got his tickets to twenty one pilots out here in in in, in August. Uh, he plans on attending concerts and doing all these things. So he doesn't, uh, uh, he, he just doesn't give up on life. And, okay. uh, you know, he, 
he enjoys his, his brothers and his sister, enjo he enjoys his, his nieces and nephews. And uh, whenever they're around, he's always, he's always down uh, in the family room uh, talking to them and, and showing them YouTube videos and all those things that young kids do these days. Is he uh, mobile at this point or is he bedridden or, or what's his status? You know, he spends a lot of time in his bed. He's very tired. Um, so he does spend a lot of time in his bed. He's very, he, he's very frail. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, his body is he's skinny. Uh, he's lost a lot of weight. But he, uh, because we've done the, 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 he's on his third chemotherapy session now after the announcement of the relapse. Uh, the second chemotherapy session, um, was at home, uh, the third he's doing right now with one of the clinical trial drugs. Uh, he has to have a bone aspirate every two weeks and maybe even sooner than that so they can uh, look at the percentage of leukemic cells in the bone marrow. Uh, he started out at 40% uh, blast cells and he dropped down after chemotherapy number one. Between the two, he had his pulmonary hemorrhaging uh, but he did drop down to 25% after chemotherapy. Number two, uh, he dropped down to 0.3%. And that's when we found um, after doing a bone aspirin, he, he went from 0.3% back up to 25%. Uh, and so uh, that's where we started hearing uh, some, real, uh, some real concerns about his future. Uh, of course, he continues to maintain a positive attitude and he's going to beat it. And uh, and hence the name TIE Fighter because he continues to fight. I love that. Yeah, that's a great that's a great nickname. And uh, just to give a little history, uh, the way that I heard about uh, David was he uh, was posting about Tyler on LinkedIn and I saw it and and I've been uh, uh, reposting some of his posts and uh, what we want to do is why don't you share right now what you know what people could do to help you or help Tyler to help the situation you know what are some positive what are some things that you're needing you know certainly uh, people you know, and I, and I posted on LinkedIn, quite honestly, to reach my network because I was receiving so many inquiries, uh, just like I do on, on my, my texting. I have one text area for cousins and family members, and I give them updates rather than doing it, you know, 800 times. Uh, I was able to consolidate it to one. I, I put out on LinkedIn uh, something for my network primarily. And it's grown uh, quite a bit. In fact, I had one post that reached 5.6 million views, uh, which shocked, shocked me uh, materially. And people have been able to make great suggestions for us uh, in what facilities to look at, uh, what things to do. Um, and so I've been able to talk to our, on our oncologists about those facilities and talk to them about what they're doing to interact and engage with those facilities. Uh, so I would say there, there were three areas in which, you know, we've requested, well, let me put up to four. Uh, we've requested uh, information on, on how do we battle the, the cancer in general, especially with the mutations and what facilities are out there that makes sense for us to talk to. The second is, is the bone marrow uh, donors themselves. Uh, we, we approached cause Tyler's adopted. We approached his birth mother and, and he has birth siblings. They refuse to participate in a bone marrow, um, or a stem cell test, if you will. Do you know why? You know, they have their own reasons or she, the mother does. Um, it, it was a closed adoption to begin with. And, uh, you know, she did contact us and told us that she wasn't going to, going to participate. Uh, he does have two um, siblings that have the same father that are older than him. Um, and we wanted 
access to them, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get it. So I've been able to contact the uh, National Marrow Donor uh, Program. They have been great. We've, we've actually uh, penetrated the United Nation of Wisconsin, and we're trying to get more people to do test kits in the, that area. Um, so the NMVP has been very good in helping us with, with donor participation. And really, it doesn't have to be Oneida Nation out of Wisconsin. It can be, it can be anybody. Uh, right now, the test kits for Tyler have a code on it. So anything that goes in, into the registry is coded for him first. And then the database is, is populated. If it doesn't work for Tyler, then the, the, the national database is populated. Uh, the third thing that happened along the way for me is uh, with the economy and in my industry, my company un, un just suddenly um, uh, dissolved, leaving, you know, leaving uh, several people, uh, dozens of people uh, unemployed. So through late January, I've been unemployed seeking employment. So I've had a lot of help. Uh, from people talking about foundations uh, and how we can help in, in, in paying for his, his medical bills. Uh, now we're looking at potential travel to Seattle. So any of that expenditure is, you know, is, is necessary. I've had to sell the home to utilize the, the equity out of the home to help fund uh, Tyler's, uh, you know, Tyler's recovery. And then I would say the fourth thing is, is prayer and our well wishes. You know, we've, I've always requested that first and foremost, really, is everybody's support and prayer. I believe in that by numbers. And so uh, that's where I tend to focus when I'm posting anything on LinkedIn is, is on prayer and support. That, I, and that's your post. I, I remember catching it. The first one, I was like, "Wow, that that's it, it resonated with me." But you know, I'm going through so many posts and things like that, and then I I, I really one one of the succeeding ones that you posted, I I read it a couple of times, and it just started resonating with me, and, and that's what uh, that's when I started reposting what you were doing and and prompting me to reach out to you because. Uh, uh, the story resonated with me. One of the things that really makes a difference with me is to see passion. I love seeing passion in people who are fighters. And, and so I see that in your story and Tyler's story. And, and for me, people who are willing to do everything that they can, especially for their their children who have cancer. I'm just all there. I, I'm I'm you know gonna do everything that I can to to uh, uh, provide you with resources and help you and th and things like that within my means. And um, so yeah, a absolutely. Uh, we're, we're wishing nothing but the best for you. What we're gonna do is we're 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 putting uh, Dave's links in the description as well as in the comments section, and uh, so that you can get a hold of him uh, directly. Or you know, if you can't, then go ahead and and message me, and I'll be sure that that uh, you you and and Dave are connected, so that uh, you know you could do whatever you can to help. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, your story is just. It, it, it's so heartbreaking. It really is. But uh, we want to have uh, have it come out to be not heartbreaking and and just a story of triumph. And, and that's what we're shooting for. That That's part of my channel is I look to inspire people. And because uh, there are so many, so many incredible stories out there that need to be heard. And you know, there's no doubt that yours is one of them. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to, you know, start throwing that those fishing lines out there and see what we can get bites on. And, and that's what it's all about. Um, is there anything else that you would like to, 
to add? Uh, in just, you know, in closing again, we have the same attitude, uh, you know, every, every morning I wake up and it's, it's, uh, you feel the wrench in your gut, uh, which is unreal. You feel like you're living a, a nightmare and then you, you wake up and as you wake up, you realize you've got to stay strong and stay faithful. Um, Tyler and I have had a conversation that his objective is to his goal and and uh, really my order, so he has no choice to, but to follow it, is to walk out of that facility on both his legs again and uh, and be healthy and that's that's the objective he's been he's been given and and we're going to live by that so he he knows that. Love it, Abs absolutely love that and. Uh... I mean, I want everybody out there who says this to to pray for your family and uh, you know, and if you can somehow uh, support him, don't you also have a GoFundMe uh, page? We do and and you know the, th the thing happened on LinkedIn where right now I get people, uh, I get dozens and dozens of messages uh, you know every night people asking for the status of Tyler, where he's at. And, um, and I had many people uh, push a GoFundMe site that they wanted to contribute and join in Tyler's fight. I was very hesitant about it because I, I, I didn't want to have my hat in my hand, uh, but I received enough pressure that I did put a Go, GoFundMe site in place and, and it has helped. It's really helped us with his his expenses and it's helped with the family uh, be able to uh, do things we need to do just to, on, on the bare minimum to keep the, the the rest of the family moving forward. That's great. That's great. So my final question for you is, you know, there's no doubt what kind of outcome that you want to have and what kind of outcome Tyler would like to have. I mean, that, that it's, it's obvious. What would your wish be for other families in in the same circumstance or similar circumstance to yours? What would you give them as far as recommendations? You know, I, I've been amazed with the stories that I've read on LinkedIn, people in the same place. And, and I've tried to be very careful in stating that Tyler isn't the only one that it's mm -hmm. really opened my mind and my heart up to, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of people who are in the same situation. Uh, and as we talk, it's, it's, it's about um, staying positive, fighting, um, making sure that you're always positive in, in front of your child. And you have the faith that everything's going to be, be okay. Uh, we just don't have any other thoughts in our mind other than that. And uh, as we converse back and forth on the end mill, uh, that's the advice I give them is, is, you know, stay strong. We don't know what it's like to live without Tyler. And that's never been a consideration for us. And it, and it shouldn't be, you know, you're, you, you, I, I love your mindset. Absolutely love your mindset. And, uh, you know, I, I love the fight in your family. And, and I wish nothing but the best for all of you. And, and you know, I'll pray for you. And, and you know, may God bless your whole family. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And I, I just want to thank you for your time. And for those of you who see this video, if you have the opportunity to and you have any kind of access to resources that can help dave and his family please don't sit back you know just step up and and do what you can to to help because there's so many people out there that need uh help right now it's it's just um it's just really overwhelming but uh the thing that really stands out to me about Dave and Tyler is just their their absolute fight and their passion and 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 I love that and you know for those people like that I'm willing to do whatever I can to uh 
to help them because they deserve to uh, have a healthy son grow up to be an adult and, uh, you know, live a, a normal life, even, even though uh, cancer does change the word <laughs> normal in people's lives, but uh, it becomes a new normal. But I'd like to thank every each and every one of you for taking a look and staying with us till the end. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. Please like the video, make a comment in the, in the comment section, and subscribe to the channel to be your own hero. Uh, and I hope each and every one of you has a great week. And, uh, you know, also help pray for Tyler's family as well. So... Have a great week, and we will see you next week on To Be Your Own Hero. Thank you very much.